Welcome, welcome to our town council meeting for our beautiful town of Poetry, Texas on this Tuesday night, May 16th, 2023. We welcome you and want you to feel heard, valued, informed, and connected to your town and its council. We welcome diversity of opinion and want minority views as well as majority views to be heard. We also appreciate mutual respect despite opposing view. Your opinions, suggestions, and comments in favor of or against a topic are welcome. At this time, I need to remind the public that a disruption of this meeting may be considered a criminal offense according to Texas Penal Code 3813 and 4205. You must be signed up to speak during the meeting and stay on topic according to state law. To preserve the order and decorum of the meeting, any person who makes profane, slanderous, threatening remarks or becomes disruptive during the meeting will be asked to leave or may be escorted out by a peace officer and given a citation. At this time, um, we have um, Jana Shelton had a medical emergency for her husband, and uh, he's uh, reportedly doing okay. They're running some tests, but in her place, we have Evie Anderson, so she's going to do roll call for us. Thank you, Evie. Councilman Tom Anderson. Here. Councilman Mike Jaffe. Here. Councilman Terry Fowler. Here. Councilman Simeon White. Here. And Councilman... Brian Vinson <laughs> and Mayor Tara Sankovic here. Thank you. And quorum is confirmed. At this time, Councilmember White will lead us in the pledge and the invocation. Please rise. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Lord, we pray to you today, we, a prayer of thanksgiving for the last two years we've uh, had together as a council and as citizens, just working together as neighbors. We know that your will has been done through it all and that you've uh, accomplished much through the people in this room and through the generous donations. And I pray that you'd uh, continue to bless us and bless all the individuals that have helped create what we have in the same way that they've blessed their neighbors and blessed this town. I pray you'd continue to bring us closer to the goal that you see for us, Lord, and that we would just continue to walk out your will for this town and for our neighbors. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Simeon. Okay, so under um, items of community interest, we um, the town is soliciting um, for any grant writers available, and please email us at contact at poetrytexas.org. Um, we have one who is working on things, but it doesn't. It would definitely be beneficial to have another one or two um, on that. If you live in Kaufman County, we want to hear from our citizens. Anyone who believes they were adversely affected by the property ID split out in Kaufman County, please email with, with factual information regarding such to mayor.tara at poetrytexas.org. To solve any of the problems, we need factual information about any hardships which this may have caused. Coy Johnson, the, dec the deputy appraiser of Kaufman County, has said it does not affect your property values as they group them together in what is called an economic unit when evaluating values. He says it doesn't affect one's homestead or agriculture exemptions. Thirdly, the town welcomes a newly approved solid waste vendor called Texas Contractor Roll-Offs which can be reached at kpots at texascontractorrolloffs.com or 469-576-5162. They only service the large 15, 20, or 25-yard dumpsters. A big thanks to Sherry and Brian Benson, who donated $500 for the now-installed aerobic septic tank at the town hall site. Thanks to Dale Bryant, who donated three concrete boards and three metal handrails to be used in the ADA bathroom. Thanks to an anonymous donor who purchased a name brand faucet for the town bathroom sink as recommended by a certified plumber. Thanks to Butch and Charlotte Lambert who donated $100 for the installation of tile in the bathroom. All donations help us keep our costs down. Thanks to council member Tom Anderson for installing the new Bolton board on the town hall site. All town notices will be available on this board from now on. 
Note that the Texas local government code requires a bulletin board or an electronic bulletin board and that it be available to the public. <coughs> local government code, section 551043 and section 551050. Therefore, this ball, uh, board was installed right at the fence for easy access and continuous availability. Right now, we have reports. We have the f April end um, 2023 report. Our beginning balance was $42,051.32. Our ending balance is $31,580.39. We Oh, excuse me. Somehow we, with um, that's an older one. Thank you for that. Um, I'm reading from the older version. We had uh, with Miss Jana out. I had to do a lot more copying than I anticipated. All right. So, excuse me. Beginning balance at forty-four thousand one hundred five dollars and seventy-seven cents. We had uh, total deposits of $99,177.17, withdrawals of $1,269.25, checks paid a total of $2,960.95. Our ending balance is $49,052.74. Okay, right now, um, since Secretary Jana is out, we're going to have um, Evie Anderson read her secretary's report. Town Secretary's Office report on current items we've been working on from the time of the last report on 4-27-23. Note, these items include work done by Mayor Sankovic, Teresa Solander, Deputy Town Secretary, and Jana Shelton, Town Secretary. Septic installation was performed and inspected on Friday, May 5th. Mayor Pro Tem Anderson and Mayor Sankovic were present at various times throughout the day. Discussed with Coy Johnson, regarding what the split out of properties may mean for land owners. He reported that the split out does not affect property values or agriculture and homestead exemptions. We received a franchise agreement from Texas contractor Roloffs with an annual fee paid. Swearing in ceremony planned and promoted. We have received a right of way permit from Farmers Electric Co op. An email received from citizen Barbara Hendricks to request the mayor and council consider an ordinance on noise control. Ms. Hendricks reports construction is going is ongoing after normal business hours. We received one application for the Town of Portree's first annual scholarship promoting agriculture. The May newsletter was composed, completed, and published. We received an invitation for a lunch and learn with Quinlan ISD on May 2nd, 2023. The council was invited. Two public information requests were received and processed. Posted daily totals online received from Hunt County Elections Division from early voting. Viewed the video from the last council meeting and processed the minutes for April 27, 2023. Corrected previous minutes. Research and creation of resolution for canvassing the election resolution. Composed the agenda and created the council packet for the May 16, 2023 
regular council meeting and posted in required places. Mayor Pro Tem Tom Anderson and Mayor Sankovic attended an appreciation luncheon for all emergency responders that was held on May 4th at the Quinlan ISD administration building. And that is from Jana. Thank you, Evie. Okay, the third report we have is um, from Council Member White. I've asked him to report about resolution uh, 2066. I haven't seen his report, but I trust it will be thorough and good. Well, I was under the impression that I was gonna give a rundown slash paraphrase mm -hmm. of Mr. Berman's thoughts, mm -hmm. right? Because we legally can't go over or read out what he has or pass it out because it's under right. confidential right. information. But just a paraphrasing of what he had is what you were expecting, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. I just wanted to clarify, <laughs> these aren't so much my thoughts as a paraphrase of that. And I'm not going to quote anything here, but I'm going to give you a rundown. Terrell passed a resolution, um, which in the end isn't going to have much of an effect on poetry in pretty much any way, shape, or form. It doesn't affect us because it was just a resolution to say they would stop their annexation plans that they had previously determined after House Bill 347 was taken into effect, which pretty much prevented cities from continuing to grow and annex. However, cities that already had plans in place before that House bill went into effect could continue them, and it was called grandfathered in. And after, and besides that grandfathering, they couldn't do anything. Part of that grandfathering included poetry and Terrell confirmed its plans in resolution 927 and 928 that it had planned to do that to poetry. However, <laughs> however, Terrell couldn't take poetry because of the incorporation, because no city can grow and take over land from a previous one. Now, so far, this is pretty much all we've known. I mean, we've known this already, and Mr. Well, here's the paraphrase continued, is that future laws would give, um, if there was ever a law change, if that house bill was ever changed or modified, then Terrell could continue its expansion despite having revoked this latest resolution they made. And this is part of the reason that it doesn't really affect us too much because A, we couldn't be taken over because we are incorporated, and B, if we ever became disincorporated, that law could always change. Tarot could come back in anyways. It's also mentioned that that's not the only way for Terrell to end up taking over poetry if poetry was no longer incorporated. The other way would be if Terrell pretty much gerrymanders where they're gonna annex, which is just choosing where they're gonna annex, and trying to acquire votes from the citizens because people can still voluntarily annex. So people would still have that option to give up their land to Terrell, which is a possibility. Those two possibilities, one being change in law, the second being voluntary annexation are prevented by poetry being incorporated and remaining incorporated. And besides that, poetry also protects its citizens from other cities encroaching besides Terrell and also from special districts. And that's pretty much the summation of Mr. Berman's report there. Thank you, Council Member White. Okay, on the consent agenda, okay. we have amended minutes from the regular meeting of March 21st, So um, I believe Council Member Jaffe worked on that. Thank you, Mike. Um, so is there a motion to accept those? Motion to approve. Okay. 
Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Jaffe, seconded by Councilmember Anderson. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay, secondly, we have on the consent agenda the minutes from the special meeting April 27th, 2023. Um, and that meeting had been a regular meeting, but we moved the date, and so it's okay to call the special meeting. Um, I did confirm that with David Berman. Um, so if, is there any comment on that from council? Well, I had a comment on item five, which it says, discuss and take action on CM Vincent's ordinance, preventing ad valorem tax and poetry. And then the paragraph below says the same thing, preventing ad valorem tax. I point was point of order, this is consent agenda. Do we need to move this to a regular agenda item? Um, so we do. Why don't we go ahead? If we're going to discuss about it, um, let's go ahead and you get a motion to move it to the regular agenda. Sure. Make a motion. We move it to the regular agenda. Okay. Second. All right. So we have a motion to move that so we can discuss it on the regular agenda. We'll call that item A. And uh, seconded by Vincent. All those in favor? All right. And that passes. Okay. Moving on to the regular agenda. Item A. Minutes from the special meeting, April 27th, 2023. Go ahead, Tom. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, item five, where it says, discuss, take action on CN Vincent's ordinance preventing ad valorem tax. I was under the impression these were procedures for ad valorem tax, that it didn't prevent it, it just uh, offered procedures. And in the paragraph below, it also says preventing, and my understanding was that just offer procedures, not preventing. Well, it, it makes it much more difficult. Well, that, that's not yeah. the same. Yeah. No, no, it's not. I, I agree well, with that edit because we, we can't legally say we have a 0%, so we can't prevent ad valorem taxes. We can just procedurally attempt to block it. So I, I, I definitely agree with that edit. Okay, so, so I, what I, wording would you prefer? I would say the word preventing to pre to replace with procedures for both in the title and in the first paragraph. I, Just both the same thing, preventing change to procedures for. I think on the current agenda, we have it worded a little bit differently and I, I kind of like that. It says restricting establishing. So it kind of restricts it. I think if you say it's procedures for, that could lend itself to say you know for someone to interpret that that we're actually um, trying to do a positive spin on it instead of saying restricting it's more it's more restrictive against establishing an ad valorem tax don't you think i'm sorry what what are you saying the word should be well on the current agenda for item we have it worded discuss and take action on ordinance restricting restricting so it's not preventing but it does provide some sort of restriction on. It's not promoting the ad valorem tax. It is more of trying to put a restriction on it. Um, but I mean, whatever you guys, however you want to word it. I mean, if we're talking strict technicality, I'd say it's restriction on the implementation of ad valorem tax because it isn't a restriction once it's implemented so much as right. implementing it. Right. And okay. and the worry that's worded here restriction on establishing but implementation I think that would be a, a more okay. precise yeah. and accurate way to, to word that. I think I okay. agree with you on that. So so that's fine. So it's restricting then on the implementation. <coughs> of, yeah. Okay. Does everyone agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else that you noticed? So it's on number five, and then where else was it worded that way? The next paragraph. It, it would okay. be twice in item five. On item five, okay. Okay. Okay, is there anything else? Yes, we can have, a Dana, um, we can approve it with those amendments if you'd like. I make a motion we approve it with the, the uh, items we just discussed for item five, replacing, preventing with okay. restricting implementation. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. 
Okay, so we have um, and the, we have a motion by Anderson, seconded by Jaffe, for approving the minutes as written, except for replacing item five in the subsequent paragraph with the words um, striking the current words and using um, uh, restricting. restricting the implementation instead. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay. Okay. On the regular agenda, we have item one. Okay. We have um, discuss and take action on the voluntary annexation agreement with addendum for Lori and Andy Bass, authorizing commitment commencement of annexation proceedings for the property located at 16750 CR 248. So Attorney Berman um, gave us the. Um, addendum and he wanted to make sure that they understood exactly what this meant and then they um, I did reach out to them several times they did finally um, submit a legal description um, it's not the full warranty deed but it um, attorney Berman did say it will suffice so we have what we need from them they have they have signed um, the initial agreement and then um, I will get with them and we can add put all this together with them if if the council approves that now one of my concerns last time was that they specifically were doing this so that their property line mm -hmm. would be redrawn and mm -hmm. we don't have control over that are they aware of that at that at this point i did reach out to the appraisal district and he said that absolutely they can okay. once once this is done then they they can do that yep so, and I did convey that to them as well. Okay, mm -hmm. okay we have Glenn Strauss. Did you want to speak on this? Okay. Any other comments from council on this? Okay, is there a motion to accept this? Now, again, this is the first step in my understanding, and then we have to bring it to a public forum to finalize some of this. Um, so, but the first step is to give this to the basses, have them sign off, um, and then uh, there's another step to it, is what Attorney Berman was saying. So, okay. well, I'd make a motion we accept this addendum. Okay. As shown. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Anderson, second by Vincent, to accept the addendum with the voluntary, voluntary annexation agreement. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay. All right, item number two, moving right along. Um, discuss and take action to pay town's legal bill of $780 um, for, la for last month. I'm in favor of it, and I'd say that for future bills like this we might want to put it on the consent agenda just so we can save some time especially if it's going to be a monthly payment mm -hmm. that's not a bad idea did yeah. I miss it in the packet we didn't get the itemized statement this time um, you didn't <clears throat> okay. well, we got a list of charges but it wasn't itemized hmm. so um, would you like to see that yeah okay there you go I did ask Attorney Berman if he minded that itemization going out in the packet. He said he didn't mind, um, oh, really? um, but he said there might be, he did appreciate me asking. <laughs> He said there might be a time that it, it would be, he is careful, but he said he, he might not want it to be in certain delicate issues. Okay, did you want to say that? Okay. okay. So are we ready to make a motion? Um, there is nobody to speak on this at this time. Then I'll make a motion we accept the uh, the invoice from uh, Mr. Berman for $780. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion by Anderson, seconded by Fowler, to accept and pay this legal bill of $780 for last month. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay, number three. 
discuss and take action to pay the annual TML property liability, which includes, they, we kind of got it piecemeal last year, so this, and this is all lump sum, and they're trying to get it all at one time now. But the TML property liability, the city liability, insurance premiums, the workman's comp, which, by the way, we did get a reimbursement on some of that because it was mid-year, and then cyber coverage premiums, which the cyber coverage did go up, but it's a total of $2,358.12 for all of that. And I got that quite late, um, I think Friday night, um, but I am thankful to have it, so I'm hopeful that you all got that. I'm seeing that Mike has it. Um, so that Jenna, you, oh, this, go ahead, Brian. I was just curious, does that include um, insurance on the town hall building? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's everything. And they worked hard to try and get it all together because we, again, we were do, had done it piecemeal throughout the year, and they were trying to get it all together, so it wasn't so confusing. Okay. So mm -hmm. did we have the law enforcement liability last year? I don't remember that one. Well... So since we had to have workman's comp, it kind of stepped us up into a higher level. We were in the micro cities, and now we're kind of not the micro city anymore, so they, they mandate that you do, <laughs> that, you, they, that, you have, um, that you have the law enforcement coverage, and we, there's not really a way to get out of that. Okay. So. And what about the automobile insurance for any hired and... Uh, Jenna says it's for any hired and or non-owned by the town. Right. I asked, um, I asked the um, Angela Matreus, who is the underwriter, um, what that is about, and that is what that's for. And we don't have any, obviously, we don't have any automobiles owned by the town. But if, um, but it, again, it's kind of, um, we, we are mandated to have it. So there's not really, we can't just excise that from the policy. So it does, for those watching and listening, it does cover um, liability on law enforcement if one of the sheriff's deputy, for instance, had, um, had something um, and it does help with any kind of lawsuits on that. We have um, the building insurance, workman's comp, personal property, general liability, errors and emission liability. Um, so it is kind of all and inclusive I just, there. I just want to dig in one more time and make sure. I know we have property liability. Do, do we have, like, regular insurance on the town hall? Like, if it's damaged? So, so general liability, because I've, on each of these things, I have... The real and personal property, I believe that covers some of that, and then the, the general liability. Yeah, the the yeah, real and so personal property, I, I, I agree. So but there's a huge packet, and he has it highlighted here. Thank you, Mike. So it does cover um, $189,750 in the contents of 11500 at this address of 5671CR323. Okay. And that it's, is called real and personal property schedule. I just wanted to set that up for a later conversation. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Is it a one year policy? It is. So it does have um, an aggregate limit of two million. Um, it has a fifty thousand dollar cyber extortion aggregate sublimit. Um, so, so I'd like to answer Mike's question. It's okay. May twenty eighth, twenty four. Is the date it's good to? So it's due the end of this month, and it will be a year policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Abby, is there? A, I don't see a number three here. I see it. Oh, wait a minute. It's sticking. Okay, there's no one to sign up to speak on this. I see. Okay. And I make a motion we accept this uh, TML insurance as shown. Okay. I know my 
house insurance is a lot more than this. <laughs> so, okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Anderson, second by Fowler uh, to accept this um, all-inclusive um, annual TML property liability, city liability, insurance premiums, workman's comp, and cyber coverage premiums of 2358.12. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay, number four, discuss and take action on the ordinance to canvas the May 6 election results. Okay, so we did get the Hunt County canvas, um, I think a week ago, they, they, only, they had one provisional and they were decisive in getting that out. Um, Kaufman County, on the other hand, we, I didn't get any information from them until last night about um, close to six o'clock. And um, they had reportedly nine provisionals and they had a board come in yesterday. Um, I don't, my understanding was it was people outside the county, but I'm not 100% sure on that. They just said they'd bring them in and then they decide on the provisionals, and again, provisional ballots are for those who aren't, you know, they, they go ahead and let them vote, but they're not sure that they actually are valid because they're not sure they're, they're actually citizens who are um, able to vote in the town of Poetry election. So then the board decides um, if they are truly in the town or maybe they're not. So. And when do we get those results? So that came last night, and Secretary Jana um, sent that out, I think, at 9 o'clock last night well, I'm or something. looking at it, but it shows, it shows unofficial, and it shows zero uh, provisional. Oh, ED. Votes. So when it says, yeah, I know, they have their own little code. Early voting. Early day. Um, so they have early, early voting. voting, and then they have election day. Election day is ED. Election day voting. Um, provision when it says ED provision that is the provisional vote so two of the votes out of the nine did count so um, and then these were added in okay. Terry when you have an opportunity not that it affects this vote much but um, would you see if I was on that list because I didn't get anything after nine o'clock last night did I see a what do well, you see if I'm on the the two list oh, yeah. okay <laughs> and I can give you this if you'd like to look at it and there is an extra copy over I noticed last night, Brian, you weren't. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the um, Jonathan Blake's on there, and you've been removed. <laughs> <laughs> so the handoff begins. Oops, I had nothing to do with that. All right, but I can give you my copy if you'd like. Uh, Simeon's sharing his. Okay. I just want to look it over real quick. Okay, sure. And, and the, so the two votes, um, I did go ahead and add those into the ordinance. So right after I received that, I think it was 538 last night, um, within the hour I amended the ordinance to include those two votes um, it, um, and it kind of went down. It added, um, it added two votes to Haley Dennis, it added two votes to Chad West, two to Mike Jaffe, two to Jennifer McFarland, one to Patrick Smith. And then it had one undervote. And that what, what that mean, means is the undervote is means someone just didn't vote. They didn't vote for five. They voted for four. So um, I did go ahead and add it to the ordinance. And so you'll see that in the packet, I included the original one. And then the amended one should have a total of 557 votes. And that's about 40%. And after the election director's and called me they said you know that was really good attendance if you had 40 percent of your uh, of a may election that was really good because apparently in the may election the average was like six and a half percent so it was pretty sad wow. so, pretty sad so even though i was not you know that happy with it apparently that's just really good for a may election um i know i, I talked to mayor craig of union valley and i think they had 10 percent so um, so on this ordinance, I went ahead and um, um, Hunt County, we had 88 early and absentee votes, and then the total votes received on election day was 314, and that's a total from Hunt County of 402 votes. Kaufman County, it was 100 early votes, which I thought was very interesting because there was 100 early votes, and then there was 53 on election day, plus the two provisional votes. So that's a total of 55, and then that was a total from Kaufman County of 155 votes. Combined totals were 557, as I mentioned. And then 
Um, you have Office of Mayor um, Tara Singovich, 297 votes received. The percentage of that is 53.32%. Haley Dennis, 260 votes with the two provisional added, and that's a total of 46.68%. And then on the Office of Council Member, Chad West received 254 votes, that's 10.28%. Jonathan Blake, 262 votes, and that's 10.6%. Uh, Mike Jaffe, 429 total votes, and that was the, with the two provisional added. That's 17.36%. Ivy Campbell, 256 votes received. That's 10.36%. Jennifer McFarland, 141 votes. That's with two provisional added. 5.7% um, of the vote. Patrick Smith, 244 votes. That's with one provisional added. That's 9.98%. Terry Fowler, um, that was 318 total votes. That's with two provisional added. That's 12.87%. And then you have Tom Anderson at 284 votes. That's 11.49%. Simeon White, 282 total votes, and that's 11.42%. So um, the results of that, when we combine the, the two counties, which um, is a task, um, in, so we have um, in the office of mayor, Tara Sankovich, Calendar, uh, council member Mike Jaffe, and these are all two year terms. Council member Terry Fowler, council member Tom Anderson, council member Simeon White, and council member Jonathan Blake. Let me, <clears throat> excuse me, let me ask real quick have, uh, have we received any notice that anybody has disputed the election? I have not. Okay. I did ask someone who had difficulty um, voting in November. They had filled out the affidavit as they were supposed to, because remember in the fall we, we tried to promote, you know, hey, if you had some trouble in the past, fill, make sure you fill out your affidavit. And he did that, and he had no trouble this time. And in the, in the past, we had upwards of 60 provisional votes. And so to have a total of 10, nine from Kaufman County and one from Hunt County, I think um, that each of the counties are and the citizens have done just that. And it is a citizen responsibility to, you know, to make sure that they're registered and that if there's any problems to, you know, no one else can do that, not the spouse, not a council member. They can't do that for you. You have to go and, and file the affidavit. And as we know, the, um, the state mandates that if any part of your property, um, any, even a foot of your property, of your primary domicile, um, is connected or in the town proper, then you get to choose whether you get to vote or not. So, but if the county, so if you haven't made that choice publicly, or then you might have to fill an affidavit to do so. But um, they decide all that. So. so, there's there's three I know of. There's several other that that's I guess voted provisional. But there's three that said they voted provisional, and and they are on the the list from Kaufman County as eligible voters. So if they all voted provisional, those three, there's only two counted. So I'm curious on how we rectify those three that I know, uh, are, they're on the list provided by Kaufman County as eligible voters. Their entire properties are in the town. So I don't handle so all that. So do we just call know. Tandy and ask her? Yeah, you, you can call Tandy. Okay. I had, uh, Jeannie gave me the name of the provisional in Hunt. Okay. She checked with the Secretary of State, and that's public information. And so, if you called her, send a note to Tandy. Yeah, I don't think it changes the, the election, but it doesn't. But it's but it one more available. provisional vote that I see should clearly count. In what county was that? It's in Kaufman County. In Kaufman County. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who the board is. I don't know. I don't have I'll any other information. But um, I did. I have it doesn't requested. Doesn't affect this, does it? No. I I have. Um, well, I mean, if the, the board decided yesterday, the election board, um, and there is an issue, then you definitely need to talk to Tandy about that. Tandy. Yeah. I don't think it changes anything, but if they're on the, the list that was provided before the election of, of eligible voters, and then they tried to vote and they had to vote provisional, I don't know why all three of them wouldn't count. It looks like two of those probably counted, but regardless, it doesn't change, I don't think. So... Um, 
I have I have myself requested an updated list so that we can have an updated list. I don't okay. currently have any, a list that's like a year old, so okay. I don't even have a, a, I'll share the one I have. a most current list. So, okay. So us canvassing this is we're canvassing the data that we've received. Basically, yeah. Okay. We're just. That's yeah. fair enough. Yep. So we have citizen Shelley Smith. Okay, so what was done prior to the election to verify the voter list? Anything? That's not our responsibility. That's election division's responsibility. <clears throat> so you don't know if there were any voters found outside of the poetry area that are on the voter list? Again, that's the election division of each county. That is their purview. We have nothing to do with that. Um, is there going to be an election committee going forward from now on? Again, the elections division is hired. We have a contract with them. They handle all of that. I, In I, fact, I, we're supposed to not even deal with we're, Legally, we can't. We can't have anything to do with that. They legally have to handle that. Uh, but an election committee would ensure that uh, things were filed on the deadlines and that sort of thing. Are we going to have any of that? Tom and I looked into that in the fall, and we were told explicitly to hands off. Do not touch it. So no citizen committee or anything? Well, so, because, well, like, who is supposed to get all of this stuff on the calendar? Which this year, it was 30 days late. So who's supposed to do that? If nobody's supposed so to touch the, it, how does it happen? So the city secretary is mandated to put things out. And, and the only thing that was late was the um, candidates who were the notice of candidates but because we didn't have a city secretary at that time. But everything else was on time. So um, we legally, you understand, legally it has to be, we can't do that legally. Now, if a citizen wants to buy signs that say get out and vote, absolutely they can as long as they don't endure, you know, without... Um, I mean, they just can't. You, legally, it has to be handled by the elections division or a company that is in agreement with that. So the state elections division is supposed to put it on our website and all that sort of stuff to make the announcements for all of that? Or should we have a committee? The city secretary's the city responsibility is to do that, and she did do that. Well, when we had a secretary. Well, so we, if we don't have a secretary for the next election, then nothing gets posted? In, if we have a proposition, then I can do that. But if I am running for office, I cannot do that legally. So that was where our sticky wicket was. So if, but we have, we have a city secretary. So um, anyway, yep, we do. All right, Patrick Smith. OK, Joshua Singovich. Okay, anything else? So to pass this, do we need to make the amendments of the numbers? Um, I've already or amended was the that. New, was the new one online? Yes. yes. Okay, that's yes. fine. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. The date format's a little different. It's 2023-5-01 is the clue yeah. that it's the newer one. Okay. Oh, yeah, I put that, I'm going to put that on because it is the first ordinance. So. Yeah, the other one was. So it has been labeled 2023 ordinance number 2023-0501. Yeah, and it, it does have the correct numbers on it. Thank you for checking that. So I'll make a motion we accept the ordinance for canvassing the election. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Anderson, second by Councilmember Vincent to accept the canvas ordinance of number 2023-0501. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay, moving on to number five. Discuss and take action on the addendum to right-of-way ordinance. So this came into play when we were... Um, 
Well, going back and forth with some of the, um, well, actually FEC, who when they have a, a franchise agreement already with us, and, and they, you know, they're kind of um, where we receive quite a bit of our revenue already, then their fees are waived because we are, they're kind of grandfather clause in. Um, but the question came up is, is the insurance going to be um, sufficient for um, what is needed? And the attorney says, yes, it'd be under item four. And um, there's one of four items for the construction security. There's a construction security posit of, of 150% of the cost of that. And so the insurance actually, but in order to make it a little more straightforward for our, our vendors or folks who are asking for um, this uh, right away application and permit, it just makes it easier for them. And it's just a little more straightforward. So attorney Berman submitted a, um, an addendum to, to make it a little more straightforward. So. We know, Tara. I don't. I don't have any feel for the size of these numbers, but you know, it's big numbers: five million, ten million. I mean, are these industry standard numbers that he used. I or? asked him. I, I thought that was a little high for for that minimum, and of course, council could make it lower. Um, I yeah, just, just felt like it was pretty high. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they're used to big numbers. I. You know, when they, I mean, Encore might be, but I don't know that. You know. Spectrum or one of these other, you know, Spectrum small. Spectrum probably is, but I would have concerns about Monster. Monster, some of the smaller companies, yeah. I, I have concern as well. So I felt it was pretty high. What is our solid waste vendors? It's one million, two million, isn't it? It's yeah. one million for them. We lowered it. Remember, we felt like with them, it, we should make it a little easier for them. I think for the lack of infrastructure we have, I, I don't see a reason why a million wouldn't. I don't want to cause undue hardship to, to someone trying to do work in the right of way. That seems like a lot of money to me, $5 million. Yeah. And, I mean, and Brian, you have experience with some of that. What is your thought on that? Um, I, I wasn't on the, the accounting side. So. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think it should be, I mean, it's, it's $10 million, $5 million minimum and $10 million um, five million per occurrence and ten million aggregate, so that seemed pretty steep. But yeah, now, I mean, I, I think do know back in like the early '90s, my dad and I had a car lot, and we had to have two million per vehicle. So uh, now I think the the law may have changed since then, but that was and that was insurance or that was the bond. So I mean, it was it was like sixty bucks to carry that bond, but um, you know, it, it was cheap. Mm. So, you know, whether or not the, the numbers are what we think they are is a whole different thing, but it would be nice to know if it's an industry standard. And, you know, we don't need to get into the business of our, our vendors, but again, if it's 60 bucks to carry a couple million, then well, you know, that, that's just, not I'm, an undue hardship. I'm thinking in the context of what's going on down the road with the tree trimming and spectrum and all that, is it, you know, what are we insuring against and who's receiving so i'm thinking the bucket truck let's say the bucket truck goes haywire and swings mm -hmm. out in traffic and somebody hits it mm -hmm. and they're killed you know that i mean a million dollars is not a lot of money in a right. automobile suit these days so but is it is it destruction of other people's stuff in the right of way or is it destruction of citizens property you know if they tear up your gate or wreck your yeah. i don't know what the way i read it it was the destruction of city property or town property yeah. which oh. we don't have a whole lot out there right under that i'm reading it says personal and advertising injury owners and contractors protective liability explosion collapse or underground hazards xcu coverage limits may be reduced upon demonstration of fiscal responsibility acceptable to the town so that's kind of their out i guess so we're saying hey we'd like you to have this because it does include products completed operations to be maintained for one year if applicable and so maybe we well I, again i don't know that this is a bad starting point we can always pass this and amend it later if somebody comes mm -hmm. to us and that, says, that's my suggestion is yeah. pass it and then well and it's what our attorney if recommended if so. there's objections yeah. by them that says we just can't do it well we can come back and review mm -hmm. it again of course um when you do have someone wanting to get a meter in or 
like I've I've had um, lots. I mean, I've been I've had several people or vendors trying to get things accomplished, and um, they want it like yesterday. So time is of the essence. But I do see that out clause: the coverage limits may be reduced upon demonstration of fiscal responsibility acceptable to the town. So it might be that um, I don't know. Do you want to? take it case by case I mean, keep that there and then well and, and this reminds me too it's a little bit of a rabbit trail but what about poetry water i mean are they going to be subject to permits and insurance and all because they're probably the tiniest <coughs> of the operators in our right away so their right of ways are on the city property i mean on the citizens property now they do cross streets and stuff they go out but the state but your easements bit. are typically on the citizens' property, okay. so but they do cross the streets and stuff. And, and I had a small conversation with Philip about that, but uh, I think we're the one writing the rules, so I don't know. Yeah, do y'all have that type of insurance? I mean, I wouldn't imagine y'all would. By y'all, do you mean Fowler? Welding? <laughs> yes. I, well, no. I mean, <laughs> no. The representatives here of the Poetry Water. I don't know what our coverage is. I can't yeah, speak honestly yeah, yeah. about it. Any so, idea and just that? to be clear, this was brought on by FECs wanting us to do this, right? Well, they they were a little confused by the, um, their legal said, "Hey, you don't have an insurance requirement." I'm like, "Well, we kind of do because it, it has to." Any, one of the four things that the state requires is insurance, but it wasn't spelled out, and it was confusing. So I'm like, "Well, let's just spell it out and make it easier." So, um, but this, I don't know. I think that's. So, Steep. you said that FEC is wanting to put in a meter, but we already have FEC fairly well grandfathered in, so it's not going to interrupt FEC installing a new meter correctly. It Correct. is. It is? Well, so it's been kind of back and forth with them for like weeks now. Okay. Um, and I've presented the ordinance, I presented the application fee for them, or the application form. I did get it, and they did send it back filled out, um, but um, their question was about insurance. I said, well, it's one of the four things. You can present insurance, and then we'll all be good. And then the fees waived because we already have a grandfather clause agreement with them, so they don't have to pay a $100 fee every single time they're in our area because they're in our area quite a bit, and we already are receiving franchise revenues from them. So there's, um, and that's one of the reasons we already have that agreement with them. But... Um, it did come up in part because of, of what their questions were. They were confused by the, the ordinance. And okay. it, they're used to seeing some sort of insurance requirement spelled out. Well, and this does that, so I think it gets us over the hurdle. And again, we can, you guys can come back and revisit it in the future well, if, and if, if, if needed. We get into a predicament to Tar's Point in 1A at the bottom it says coverage limits may be reduced upon demonstration of fiscal responsibility acceptable to the town. So like we got in a pickle, we could say we're satisfied that FEC is adequately insured. Go ahead and put the meter in. And this is an administrative thing, the clause here, I believe. So if um, it's not like I don't, I don't think that that's something. In, in what I've ascertained from David, so there's a little bit of administrative leeway. So I could present it maybe on the forum, and if you guys think it's acceptable, <coughs> it's sort of an administrative role. It's not something that you actually have to vote on since it's already in the ordinance. No. So it could be discretionary, and then I could, you know, consult with, you know two or more, you know, two of you at least, um, and then on the, put it on the forum, and if you guys are, you know, and, and we could have a special meeting if we need to, but if you were in agreement, then we wouldn't necessarily, because it is it is it's written in this that there is some flexibility there. But I guess, I'd say we're not experts on this. Uh, they are the contractors, and Mr. Berman, presumably. So I guess as Mike said, I'd say go ahead and pass it. And if we get some pushback, then we come back and review it. If not, then it flies like it is. And that would be my suggestion. Well, and you, if you have a big event of a, you know, a big catastrophe, I can see where it could easily, it could go into the millions, multi-millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, God forbid, but it does happen. Yeah. 
Well, absolutely. I, I mm -hmm. agree with that from lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So do we need to email Berman about the applicability of this and who's a vendor and who's not? To Mike's point, is, is Portree Water a, a, a vendor or a contractor that this is applicable to? Um, yeah, I think we could. I, I think um, I touched on this um, I don't mind emailing, before. but, but yeah. we need to figure out. Because in my opinion, just to be clear, when I had this conversation with Tara, I didn't feel like this uh, was needed right now because FEC is actually working for Spectrum, and that was just mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Their, Spectrum has the permit. They need a power source to energize their system. So. FEC was working for Spectrum, so in my mind, this was—I I didn't see a reason to hold up FEC and Spectrum, but uh, I don't—I don't have a problem as long as we get it passed, so they can get on. With right. I was work. trying to expedite as much as possible, since again, I don't want to hold up someone's meter, but we have—you know—it's like, okay, just get me the form, and they. Um, they did provide the map of where it was going to be. That's one of the requirements. Um, we waived the fee for FEC because obvious reasons, and then um, they just had to fill out the application form. And but I'm st I'm actually still waiting on the insurance of all things. I said, look, this is one of the four criterion um, in our ordinance, but this will spell it out better. So, well, um, to your point, Terry, I think where they're putting in meters for Spectrum's little repeaters along the path. They're working under Spectrum, but their new three phase coming from down that's by 276, right. that's a whole other project. You know, all the tree butchering stuff. That's a that's a main feeder line they're bringing in to support poetry. So that, that should be a permit and should have insurance and all of that because that's a mm -hmm. pretty big deal. Do we have any citizen comments? No. Okay, uh, right away ordinance Glenn Strauss. Did you know? Okay. It. So, if council is willing to allow a little bit of administrative leeway, and we can, you know, certainly would bring it past um, the two signatories if we were to do something like that. But just, I feel like if we, you know, put it on the forum and um, discuss that. But hopefully. The bigger companies, that would be no problem for them. Well, I, I'd make a motion we go ahead and accept it, and if you get some pushback or anybody else does, well, then let us know. Well, I think at the end of the day, our job is to protect the town and the citizens, so this is it's probably very protective. Yeah, I, I agree. And if we get pushed back and it puts somebody out of business or you know puts them in jeopardy, we'll come back and rediscuss. But I'm the same way. I've yeah, I think one eight is a good out for that. Okay. Motion, I'll second. Okay, we have the motion by Anderson, second by Jaffe to accept the addendum to the right of way ordinance as written. All those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Okay. And I can mention about poetry water. Okay. Number six. Discuss and take action on ordinance restricting establishing an ad valorem tax in poetry. Okay, so we have um, ordinance number two 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 zero two three five zero two, and um, I think we had this. We were working on this last time. Um, cleaned it up a bit. And is there any discussion on that? Uh, the only discussion I had on there was if we should change it to fourth fifth. Just. It, to my mind, it's simplistic. Two thirds takes more than three voters, so in my mind, four fifths. Uh, that that was my only edit that I would add, and that was. Uh, and where was that? It was two sections. Yeah. Right. Let's see. Super majority section, section eight. Yeah, and then and the follow section nine. Yeah, and then also yeah. nine. Eight and nine. I mean, essentially the same thing. Uh, two thirds vote takes four voters, so let's just say four voters out of five. Now, um, addressing uh, an issue that Mr. Strauss brought up last time is, you know, the the town does need funds, so um, I wanted just to uh, remind us that I also, as this was basically two bills or two ordinances that I came up together but one of them was the the voluntary fund that was as an attempt to, to fund the town through that mechanism so um, I, I do have some concerns that there there may not be enough funding um, but I'm 
<laughs> willing to risk that. Uh, but I would like to see the council in the future uh, circle back to the, the voluntary fund idea and see if we can generate some internal funds without having to uh, put a property tax in place. I think that's also even part of this ordinance, I believe, we still kept it, that says they have to review all possible right. funds. And I think that one should be noted and remembered if such a case arises. And I think that to, to your point, Tom, on the, the forum, I'm, I'm, I'm in line with uh, your number six that, you know, I don't, I don't see it being something that's going to sneak up on us right now. I'm not opposed to, to us working on this more on the forum because I'm with you. This is restricting the next, the future councils maybe after us. I, I think we're, I think we're all in line that we don't ever want to pass a tax, but uh, I, I think it could do good to have more conversation on it to your point on the forum well and i guess i would point out I and mean, there are things that i do like about it a lot I mean, and and one of them is, is it requires a vote by the town residents Absolutely. which i support that i think that's right and then uh, i like the idea that it has to be clearly written presented documented made public i, I like all those things well and, and i guess you're stating terry that my point is i just don't like the idea of imposing this on future, the strictness on future councils, uh, because we have no idea in 10 or 20 years what they're the going to be facing. And, and I, don't, I doubt that any of us will be on the council in 20 years. <laughs> Sorry, not me. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. I'm not, but I'm not against it. I just yeah. don't like the restrictions on future councils. But I mean, and as I wrote it, that was the intent, was to restrict future, future <laughs> yeah, councils. I, I and, <laughs> but every ordinance that we pass, and I'm not saying we have to pass it tonight. I mean, you guys debated it as long as you need to to feel comfortable with it. But I'm just saying every ordinance that we pass is a restriction on future council. Sure. So, I mean, that, that's kind of the role that we're, we're, we have here is to make sure we're doing what is right for the town, not just today, but in the long term. Well, and and well, to your I point. Guess, I guess I would add that this is not just another ordinance. This is a major thing. Sure. And so I'd say it's elevated over a lot of the other works that we do. And while I, I do agree with most of the points, I mean, my opinion is, Yes, I think we should have a lot of this. It's just I don't like the idea that we restrict future councils when we don't know what they're going to be sitting against. Yeah. And that's my only point. And then I also do think, uh, just as Mr. Strauss made a point last week, uh, or last meeting, rather, uh, he has a view. Well, I, I think there's probably other people that have views. Some may be different, some the same. But I guess I would say we should be very careful stepping into this with the, the restrictions. Not the issues that I mentioned that I like. I'm comfortable with that. But the restrictions, I don't think we should step in too lightly. It should have a lot more broader input from the citizens or the residents, as well as maybe other experts, not just citizens, as to what are we uh, putting out here. Because like uh, Mr. Strauss pointed out, there's examples that we need to be thinking of and be aware of. And that's down the road. That's my only point. I don't want to tax. I just don't want to impose something. I mean, we all, none of us want to be told what to do. That's kind of what we're like, all of us. Well, this is telling future councils what they can't do. And, and that's not something that I would really like. And I, I, and I make that I, decision. I, I align with you there just because I, I think you, you wrote a very good policy. Uh, it takes lots of city meetings uh, or council meetings, lots of citizen input. And, and, and mostly I like the vote. Uh, to mm -hmm. your point that we're always restricting future councils, yeah, a lot of these, though, can be swapped off like this. The implementation, I think, uh, could be the hang-up. So if a future council says, yeah, we need it, they have, all the, uh, they have all the meetings that are required, and then the town unanimously, I mean, overwhelming, well, we've still, the implementation part of this ordinance draws it out to the next election, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, to your point, I see could be a hang-up. So I, I think it's well-written, but I, I wouldn't mind, you know, talking about that again because the town's going to change. It's going to evolve. Uh, and, and, and one day the, the people might say, yeah, we're okay with a tax because we're tired of our roads or we're tired of whatever. I think the implementation part of it may be pulled back a little bit. And see, I can see that, and I'm actually for it, but in the same way that I'd rather be over um, 
in any restrictions in the same way that we're over in maybe the um, requirement on insurance. This can be amended. It just requires four-fifths, if we accept your edit, which I think would be good, four-fifths of the council to do it. So if they don't like any of this, if the but citizens even that don't edit elect, wouldn't, wouldn't go into effect until actually after the next election. It's an implementation as That's well. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So the process is the punishment, to use a popular term. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's that's okay. true. There is the chance of them just writing another ordinance that tears this one apart somewhat. I know that's been thrown out there as a possibility. I don't know how. I hope that that isn't a real possibility, but they can always change it if they want. And this does put some restrictions on them, but only in as much as it'll make them be careful it will make them work a little bit if they really want to put a tax on everybody. But I don't think it'll make it impossible. Well, let's hear from some of our citizens. How about Glenn Strauss? I'm Glenn Strauss, 11072 County Road, 2454 Poetry. And like I told you before, I've worked in property taxes for 40 years. I was in California when Proposition 13 passed, passed in 1978, and it froze taxable values at what they were, whatever they were worth in 1975. And it has absolutely wrecked the infrastructure of California. They don't, they don't have any money. Uh, and I just, I think it's unrealistic to pass a real severe ordinance because this town's going to grow, words, roads are going to get worse, and the council is the one who would suffer the pain of passing a property tax. So you're hiding behind an ordinance that you're passing yourself here. You're hiding a bunch of, uh, behind a bunch of sandbags. Now, some restriction, yes. But this two-thirds or whatever you're talking about, I'm opposed to that because I've seen what it did in California. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Del Bryant. Patrick Smith. Joshua Sinkovich. Oh, did he leave? Okay. Okay. Well, and we, we don't know the future. Um, it makes it difficult. And it's yet to be seen how much revenue we actually do receive from sales and use tax we won't really know for like an entire year so well it sounds like i mean really most people are in agreement i don't think most of us want a property tax now most of us realize that one will probably be impending in the future and that we <laughs> should have some restrictions in play and that this might be too <laughs> strict so i'd love to hear if anybody has any specific you know, sections that they want to cut are parts of sections. Because, I mean, this is how we're going to get through this and pass this very important ordinance is us pointing out specific things and cutting them like we did last meeting with. And I think very good sections, uh, very good to remove the sections that we did last time around. If there's any more, I think let's go ahead and knock that out. Maybe we don't get it past this meeting, but if we've got anything, might as well progress. Well, I don't disagree with Glenn Strauss. The only reason I brought up four fifths because it just makes number sense, right? Two thirds is 3.3. .3. So I'm okay with the majority being three, but I just want to call an apple an apple. If, if it takes four voters, if that's the intent of the council, it should say four voters. If the intent of the council is three, it should say three fifths. Uh, Thank you for that clarification. But that's yeah. the only reason, mm -hmm. yeah, that mm -hmm. I wanted that in there. Okay. I don't disagree with that. Could devastate you know you could have four council members that's adamant against it and one that's saying man we really need it so that that's the only reason for the four fifths but as far as implementation i'm i'm with tom i think i think maybe we should consider uh time and difference on the implementation because we do have all the meetings set up in there and we do have a citizen vote which which what does that vote look like it doesn't say is that going to be held at a regular voting time so it doesn't that wasn't my addition so <laughs> okay. let's see what what section is that in so i guess my concern is a little bit that it's repeated What's twice daily on official broadcast media such as radio television or equivalent uh, communication media so if we're needing money that sounds pretty expensive <laughs> to, that, to that's only if we have 
it, that's only if the, the town has those facilities. If we're not doing broadcast media, okay. then we're not needing to um, go to you know channel four, channel five, and, and put something out there. That's if we're doing it internally. Okay. I, I guess I'd say add a point about the four fifths. Actually, I think this is such a serious, important thing to do. I, I have no problem with the four fifths just because of this importance. In fact, that's my whole feeling. This is not just another ordinance. This is a really significant ordinance and it deserves time and, and more input than we've had before. I, I mean, I, I think I appreciate what Glenn has said and I would say there are probably other people that could give us advice that are more experts than we. So I, I guess my only feeling is, is we need to take our time have more meetings, have more uh, presentations, and tar whether it's a matter of having this as an only item and encourage people to come. I, I'm in, I'd say I'm in favor of that. It's just that's important an issue that we shouldn't take lightly. Mm -hmm. This ordinance, I mean. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's more important to get right than to get right now. So I try. Um, mm -hmm. So are we in agreement with the four fifths? Is that how you want to word it? Uh, four fifths of the total members? I'm in favor council? of that. I think four that's fifths. good. I okay. mean, even in our uh, federal government, in some things, a supermajority is required. Mm -hmm. And it's two thirds, which in this case is really four fifths. Mm -hmm. And that's clearer. So, I mean, I'm in favor of that. I can also see cutting section five with the implementation date because after all that's I mean we'll still get a property tax if it's implemented that just allows less flexibility for implementing it well, I would suggest that if we're not going to pass it tonight that in the future there's a workshop or something held and, and we go ahead and reclaim the time that would otherwise be used yeah. to discuss it yeah that's I, Brian I guess that's my point suggest a workshop as a special workshop or whatever form should be. Okay. All right, noted. Okay, so. No action. No action except to maybe amend that to say four fifths and then we can consider a workshop maybe. Okay. And, and I guess I'll just go on record. I agree with, agree with Glenn Strauss. I would like to see a majority. Uh, just because the, all that does is take it to to a vote that's the majority of the council saying let's take it to the citizens that's not a four-fifths vote that's that's all this is that's all that's allowing us to do either change it or take it to the citizens so uh, I'm okay with the majority rule on that but we can debate that or not debate it but we can discuss it on the on the forum or or uh, another platform okay so no action tonight and we'll discuss it later all right, number seven, <clears throat> discuss and take action. Um, letters to the mayor, mayors and commissioners of Hunt County urging them to consider a resolution opposing the formation of special use districts by developers. So um, council member White worked on this and then um, this was just yesterday. I just kind of put our seal on it and I didn't put that in the packet just um, because it's not been passed. It is the same oh, one. Okay. I just kind of, and then I actually made a signature page just because it kind of lends um, that way. Each of you can sign it, and gotcha. it's a little more um, to it. But this is the same. It's word. the same one. All I did was put our seal on it, and I put the date on there, uh, date place, and then I put a place where each okay. of us could sign it so that it looks a little more substantial. Okay. And it's it's just. When are you planning on mailing? I didn't it? change anything else. When are you planning on mailing these? Well, as soon as um, it's approved, and then we can each put our John Hancock on it. Sam, before Thursday? If you wish. I'm, I'm, I don't know if it should be my signature or Jonathan's. Oh, okay, I hear you. Um, yeah, why don't we go ahead and do, we could actually sign it tonight if it's approved, and then that way we'll get it out. Because sure. actually, then I would have to change your name on there. And that's <laughs> all assuming that it's passed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay. No, I like to the, uh, the I, I have to say I, I don't have any problem with it and I do appreciate you putting in that last sentence at the end of the first paragraph following is our opinion on the matter because mm -hmm. it's some opinion some fact and mm -hmm. uh, 
anyway, from there on in, I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Okay, we have a um, letter, Glenn Strauss, did you want to speak? Okay, he will pass us on that. So we're going to mail this to Hunt County or to all the cities well, in Hunt County or um, we're well, he wrote it to, I mean, I think that if Hunt County wanted to do like Hoffman County did, then they would present it to all the mayors. I don't even have all the mayors um, of all the city's addresses at this point, but we could research that. Um, so, but we could definitely send it to Judge Stovall of Hunt County, and then he could disseminate that. If, but however you, you want. I mean, um, on Thursday when Secretary Teresa's in, we could put her to task on get it collecting all those and then we could definitely make those copies the only caveat to that would be that we would need two signature pages from each of you um, and then have to photocopy probably well, we so can't, if, if the notary isn't here we can't sign it can we well you can I she attests my signature um, she's only attesting my signature you all could you could sign it and then um, and then before I sign, I will have um, the notary, Janice Shelton. I, I, I was Monica. understanding she could legally could not do that. She has to see us. When we, She's when only she attesting has. my signature. She wouldn't have to attest yeah, each of yours. Of yeah, I could sign it in front of her, but each of you just sign above here. She's attesting my signature. You know, just a, a late in the game thought. I wonder if it would be helpful to include the Kaufman County example in this so they see kind of we could. what we would like them to ask Hunt County to create, right? I think so. I mean, what I would originally envisioned in the, is that we send them both the minutes for Rockwall, the ordinance for Rockwall, and the Kaufman County ordinance. Might as well give them all the right. supporting documents. Yeah, and then that we them. send this to the cities and the county itself in Hunt so that the other cities can hopefully put pressure or suggest to Hunt to implement this so we aren't alone in our efforts, but also give it to Hunt so that they have the ability to consider it just with us. So as written, um, I could, we could go ahead and sign tonight for Hunt County, but then it, I don't know, how, I don't even know how many cities are in Hunt County, so that would have to be researched and all the addresses found and um, but I do know that it probably would carry more weight if Hunt County just went ahead and did did that so but I'm open to what what council wants to do I'd just send it to whoever will listen <laughs> <laughs> so can we um, Is there a motion? Well, I guess I still, I would like to hear from Jana, Jana that mm -hmm. she's okay with us signing this and then her stamping it. I was under the impression she couldn't do it. I, and I understand what you're saying, Tara, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I mean, when I've signed things before a notary, they had to be there. So, so if, now Secretary Jill, uh, Jana is working from home and now her husband's in, in um, well, he's getting tests done tonight in an emergency room. She was, I was trying to get her to come in um, for a little bit, I think Thursday afternoon. So maybe before this swearing in ceremony, we could take care of this if you'd like. And then th that way that, you know, we, and then we can maybe have all the copies needed. She needs a witness or be present? Because she'll see it on the video. She's going to see us signing it. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, Mike. I mean, that's, they have mm -hmm. certain rules. I know. The notaries do. Yeah. yeah. Normally the yeah. seal says before Well, and the me. seal. It needs to be you know. comfortable. It's us that signed mm -hmm. yeah. it. I get that. Yeah. But I don't know what well, the we have to, if, if, um, I mean, the council members don't normally sign these, but if you um, feel you that. You just drop by the feed yeah. store and uh, sign it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any problem signing okay. it. I just want to make sure that Jenna is, she's uh, in the right frame. Because 
I don't know that this is the legal without her being present. So we would have, so if Jana comes before the swearing in ceremony, like it, um, she said she would come in the office maybe around four o'clock on Thursday. If each of you can be there at that time, then we could all, we could take care of it at that time in that, front of Jana. That, that, Another yeah. consideration is this is not a legally binding document. Why do we have to have anybody attest to our signatures? I was wondering the same thing myself. I mean, this is just an opinion letter that we're sending out. It's not even an ordinance. Well, and my point was that she was just going to test that I was the final signature. I wasn't planning on her attesting each of you. Um, so the test is above my name. She would attest that I did confirm that, yes, each of you signed that. So that was my take on it. But, okay, and so, then we can put the So none on. of this affects our ability to go ahead and approve it as a council. No. We just need to work the detail, the signature, and mm -hmm. timing. So yep. That's, that's, so let's, that's if my we, feeling. So I make a motion that we approve distribution of this to Hunt County and the cities within Hunt County, along with the other materials that will help it be more self-explanatory, Kaufman, Rockwall, Minutes, whatever Simeon approves or suggests. Okay, is there I a second? second that. Yeah, and I agree, and then let Jenna decide how the signature should work. But I agree with that, and I'm fine. Okay. So we have a motion by Councilmember Jaffe, seconded by Anderson, Anderson to approve the letter and disbursement um, to, um, as he stated, all those in favor. And that passes unanimously. There's 15 cities in Hunt County. There okay. you go. That's not overwhelming. <laughs> 16 without counting. I'm going to go buy some more stamps. We used them all up. So then we would have to, if, um, if we didn't photocopy, we'd have to have like 16 letters at least, yeah. which that's a lot of signatures, but you can do it. I got a rubber stamp. <laughs> All right. Item eight, discuss and take action on the ordinance to personalize the town of Poetry Oaths to be in accordance with the duties required for town officials. Okay. So um, Lakewood Village had, had personalized their oath and... Um, you know the the state has just kind of a generic one and this one um uh, attorney berman said you know it requires an ordinance to do that but what i was realizing is um in the powers and duties of mayor the mayor is the chief executive officer of the municipality the mayor shall at all times actively ensure the laws and ordinance of the munici municipality are properly carried out the mayor shall perform the duties and exercise the powers prescribed by the governing body of the municipality and it goes on so if that is the duty of a type A general law mayor, then um, I believe the council members and the mayor should take an oath to uphold that. And in the oath that we currently have by the state, it's very generic that you're going to uphold the constitution and the laws of the state of Texas. But this goes one step further and says, you know, uphold the towns, um, ordinances um, and that is what I'm mandated to to do as well and I think um, to be unified that we should all um, well I don't want to be nitpicky on this um, but I probably won't be in favor of it whenever we vote for a couple reasons first because that section is part of state law and we're already swearing to uphold it anyways but also, I don't like to mess with oaths too much. I'm not a huge fan of them. I'm a let your yes be yes and your no be no kind of guy. And um, adding to that formality or editing what the state has, I just am not personally in favor of. I wouldn't want to change or require people to take a different oath than what Texas is already doing. And for me, we set a precedence and a principle that we would not rewrite into our ordinances items that are already existing in state law state law says that this is what you're going to do and you're swearing to abide by state law therefore you're attesting that you will abide by this section so that's that's my catch with it okay in the roundabout way you you are yeah but it just makes it more clear yeah Okay, are there any other comments? I guess I would say I 
the phrase to the best of my ability kind of leaves things so that if there's something that we don't know about or law mm -hmm. or ordinance or that we forgot because mm -hmm. we're all infallible or not mm -hmm. infallible that you know it could happen and as long as it is that phrase to the best of my ability i believe that means that you know if we actually do something that is not in, in violation of our laws or ordinances well it's not because it was intent it was just because we weren't aware or didn't remember so brian just for clarification i think i heard what you said but your your point is that you believe this is already covered by the standard oath that we took two years ago correct okay so it's redundant and then simeon you just don't like but you already have to take an oath right I took the oath that says that I will mm -hmm. abide by the state law, which says that I will abide by the the ordinances, ordinances. of the town, et cetera. So I'm, I feel like we're already covered. Well, what is it? I mean, you, you printed this section well, out the, for the mayor. Is there a section? There, there, section there, for the well, council? and that's the whole, that's the caveat there that puts a hole in that because it doesn't say that for the council. It says it for the mayor specifically, but it does not specify for the council. So if I'm supposed to ensure that, and the second paragraph is the mayor shall inspect the conduct of each subor subordinate municipal officer. Um, Which I, the council is not a subordinate of the mayor. Right, and show cause any into that. So it doesn't actually have a place where council is held accountable in that that I can tell because I did look for a council. And so it says the mayor has to do that, but it doesn't actually say that for the council. And that's a problem if I'm supposed to m actively ensure that the laws and ordinances of the municipality are properly carried out and the council doesn't have any kind of um, clause that says that they have to do that, then that could be a problem. Yeah, well, surely, it, uh, this, uh, surely this we section. haven't found a hole in the... No. No, <laughs> this, no we haven't. Right. This, well, this section is just for the powers and duties of the mayor, so no, it's and not I did going look, to include anything from council. No, but I did look for the council. The I did look for the council, and there was not anything that I could find. This is in the general government code? General local government code. Okay. I, mean, I, I had have, we have thought the, it was covered under <laughs> officers, but I would have to go back and yeah. look. So there. while people are Googling, um, yeah. can we take a quick break? Sure. Come on forward. It is almost 8 o'clock. So, all right. Glenn Strauss, did you want to speak to this? Okay, we'll skip that. All right. All right. The time is 7:59. We'll take a five-minute break. We were having a couple councilors looking at the local government code to see if they could find anything. I did. I and did. Did you find something? Yeah. So duties of a mayor is 22.042. If you'll scroll down to 22.072, that is. I've lost it. Powers and duties of municipal officers. So it's clearly defined. Uh, it doesn't go in as detail as point zero four two, but it is in there to Brian's point. What's it say? Yeah, could you read it for us? Oh gosh. Uh, the governing body of the municipality may require a municipal officer whose duties are prescribed by this code to perform additional duties. The governing body may prescribe the powers and duties of the municipal officer appointed or elected to an office under the code. Uh, sorry, I might need your glasses. Well, it's, yeah, and all this is in the context of bonds, so I'm not sure. But it's still, it's the same, it's under the same heading as powers and duties of a municipal officer versus powers and duties of a municipal mayor, right? They, it doesn't sound like they're enumerating those powers and duties. Yeah. It's saying no. it can, be, it, it, since it's saying that it can be assigned by the municipality, it sounds like I, I'm now <laughs> moving over to, to um, Tara's side of this equation, and we probably should. Yeah. I mean, because there's another section, uh, 0 0.77. Let me get to it. That's the removal of a municipal officer. And it clearly defines in there if, if there's malfeasance, uh, incompetency, corruption, misconduct, drunk, 
uh, that they can be removed for those reasons. So that clearly defines what the expectations are to not conduct incompetency, corruption, misconduct, malfeasance. So I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily see the reason for the change in the oath. No. I mean, there's a reason Texas requires that oath is because it is enough. She has a little – the mayor has a little more – uh, to do with the day-to-day, -day, the finances, the communications. There's a lot to more that position. I promise I'm going to uphold this position, uh, yeah. and if the council sees it fit that we swear in another oath, but, I mean, golly, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. One of these guys out here could speak. I don't know when this was edited, but it appears 1987 was the last edit on that. So I guess the state of Texas thought it was – Sufficient. Well, I know several yeah. towns, though. Okay, so this, and, and to this point, though, the state of Texas is doing a general, a general rule, and then the, they expect the cities to go ahead and and make because there are several cities that do this very thing. They make it their own. They make their own. So the, so the how, state expects it, or well, yeah, I was going to ask, how do you know the state expects it? Well, because the there are several cities who do cater that to their own town because the state's not going to say oh and and take the o's of your of the town of poetry they're do not going to do, do you that. know if those are chartered cities or if they're general? well the charter they you go even further but we're you know we're not under a charter right. so well i don't but. i wouldn't think just because some cities pass this ordinance that the state necessarily expects them to i mean we pass plenty that the state doesn't necessarily expect us to well, if y'all just want to break the rules and... No, I'm well, teasing. do you have any no, I mean, I'm if, teasing. If the I mean, that's county, what I guess what we I, I just, after. Council passes. It, if, if I, and I'm, I, well, it started right. because I was reading this. I was like, man, I'm, I'm supposed to... Bef you know, I don't mind saying that because I don't feel like just the, the rule, you know, that I want to support the Constitution. Yes, as an American citizen, I want to support the Constitution and the state, the rules of Texas. But it goes further and says the laws of the municipality make sure they're properly carried out. So I feel like if I'm go in my sp if I'm supposed to mandate that citizens of our town are properly carrying out the laws and ordinances of the municipality, then I feel like you know what I need to hold myself accountable. And so I feel like I should, you know, say this. Did we get an example of the oath? I don't guess I printed it out. The original one? No, the oath that we're. We're talking about changing to it, it's the one right from here. The Constitution, Article 16. So the original one just says, "Whoops," says this. Um, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of blank of the state of Texas and will do my best, do to the best of my ability, preserve, or excuse me, of the state of Texas and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of the state. It ends, and then this one adds, and the laws and ordinances of the town of Poetry, Texas, so help me God. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like it holds myself accountable if I'm supposed to, if this is, this in section, local government code section 22042 says this, then, and I'm supposed to, carry this out, then I don't want to try and mandate to our citizens something that I haven't done myself. I just feel like it's, it's an integrity thing. Well, I have to say, I don't, I don't mind this, the way it's written with the town of poetry, but I do understand what Brian's point is. And that's almost to me a legal issue. So I'm happy with it either way. I don't care. I'm going to do the best I can to the best of my ability, whatever it is, but whether this is a legal issue or not, as Brian and has said, I don't know. Uh, I, and I'm, if, if I misspoke, I apologize, but I'm just saying it's a matter of principle. We, as a council, we decided that we were not going to put another ordinance in place that is already covered by state law. So that, that's, that's my main objection to in, it. In, and in the state code, it doesn't specify In, in the state that. code, it does not enumerate the, the um, responsibilities, and neither does it in the revised oath. Yeah, and it, well, in that section of state law, anyways, I'd have to look into it more, because I'm sure there are other sections than just sections about bonds, mm -hmm. as Mr. Jaffe pointed out. So I just have to look at that more. I mean, if this was something else, I'd say, let's just pass it for the sake of 
moving on, but you know, it's an oath, it's a big deal. I don't um, think we should. So it's one extra line, is it really? I mean, to me it is. I think oaths are of the okay. utmost important. I okay. consider my word to be, you know, one of the most important things to me. My integrity is more valuable than my property, that's for sure. Well, I, so to me it's of the highest well, What I'm saying is you're already going to say an oath as a council member, and then it just adds a layer of that, hey, we're going to be loyal to poetry, and we're going to try to behold the laws and ordinances of the town of poetry specifically. And since we haven't found, and, and I did get the new municipal Texas law code book, and I did look through it extensively, I did not see anything specifically that mandates that council, which is kind of odd. Um, so I just felt like it, was, it might be kind of a gap. And I just feel like if that is what I'm required to do, then I feel like at least council members should be as well. Um, we don't. Um, Glenn already passed on that. <clears throat> so is there... I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm okay. I mean, it, we're, we're allowed to add an additional oath. I hear Brian and Simeon's points, but I also uh, hear hers, and I don't know this. see why any of us would have an issue agreeing an oath or writing or otherwise. Well, and I guess since I co-signed some of the checks, I feel like I'm already bound by that because a lot of the checks have to do with things that we're doing. So I don't have any problem with it either way. But if even if we don't pass it, I feel like it still applies to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Tar wants to hear us say it. I'm going to say it. <laughs> well, I just... When I, like I said, when I read the, the what I'm required to do is a tex, you know, a Texas mayor of a general law type A town. I just feel like it it requires this of of. Okay, okay. let's let's put it to a vote. Yep, let's do. Let's see. One, okay. one one last comment is, okay. is just if. If it is voted in the affirmative, note that you're voting out the principle that we established previously. What are you talking about? That we're not going to write into... But we didn't find that it was in the code for council members. And we're, not, we're not adding anything specific into it that... And, and, and the town of poetry. I mean, that's, that's not an, a specific enumeration of duties, responsibilities. So, um, I'll also principles mean... Uh, Simeon's word means a lot to him. My word means a lot to me as well. But you know, principles are one of those things that you you stand on or you don't have them. Okay, so I'll make a motion <laughs> that we <laughs> accept this ordinance with the oath as it is written, and so we can get a decision and move on. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Anderson, seconded by Councilmember Jaffe. All those in favor? And we've got two, and it, it fails two to three. Your speech didn't work. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in favor of moving on. So. Yes, me, me too. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number nine. Discuss and take action on Town of Poetry's first annual scholarship promoting agriculture in our area. So, um, Council Member Fowler and Jaffe, would you like to speak to this? That we had one applicant <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they met their requirements? We had one applicant. Um, there were several interested, but they, they didn't live in the area, per se. This young man... Um, does live in the town of poetry and he wants to go to welding school which is one of the things that we um it could be a trade school and his mother said it was around twenty thousand dollars a year or something so this is just a drop oh, wow. in the bucket for him yeah, but like every little bit helps did you um want to say anything about this no i mean i'm oh, yeah. the only question well, i had and i don't know that we ever got back around to it or is the council going to write the recipient in the now and in the future of the check, or are we going to give it to the school? 
Well, that's something that council could decide upon. I I feel more comfortable writing the check to, to the school. school. I do too. And 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 sometimes they're yeah, after they pass or whatever. And mm -hmm. I don't even want to do that. I mean, uh, if if we have an enrollment page, uh, then I'm I'm good with writing the check to the school on behalf okay. of the recipient. So he did have. Um, two letters of recommendation still waiting on the third so that would be and of course i didn't you know put it out there his um academic record we have that though um and i think he meets all the um the other criteria so um does do you want to make a motion that we do that well, then can or can we anyone back, talk on back, in? back up just a second sure. car. so one of the things i didn't realize and this is not a bad thing but when we you and I and Terry started discussing this through email was what the scholarship was up to financially. Um, as far as like 1500 so um, we had Citizen Chad West donate 1000 Terry Fowler 250 and then we had Anonymous 250 so I believe it's at 1500 Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it had grown until I saw this. Okay. So and if there's someone else who wants to contribute to this lad, um, you're, uh, the, the window of opportunity is closing, but yeah. you, anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And the whole purpose was to encourage future agriculture related endeavors and someone who's a welder and does fencing and that is certainly applies. So, um, you know, we put on there agricultural business, agriculture, agriculture economics, aquaculture, animal science, poultry science, entomology, veterinary medicine or trade schools, including but not limited to the above. And since we have one applicant and he, you know, he meets the requirements, then. Yeah, the other so thing, I don't think we said this yet, but the other thing we discussed is where we actually give this, and <laughs> Terry had suggested, and I supported them on it, we do it here at a council meeting. Okay. Just, and we can announce it so citizens will know it's happening that night. Mm -hmm. So sure. if you want to come and cheer for them. Okay. Citizens? Um, Chad West? No? Okay. So All I'll right. move to, uh, do we state their name now, or do we want to wait? Uh, can I sign up for this? No, sir. Sorry. Um, just move to approve the move to approve and then we could announce it Thursday night if you want yeah that'd be fine and then so I'll make a motion okay. to uh, approve the first annual scholarship uh, and we will be writing the checks to the school okay. upon enrollment okay is there I'll, I'll second okay we have a motion by Fowler seconded by Tom, uh, Anderson. Tom Anderson um, to make the check out of fifteen hundred dollars of our Poetry's first annual scholarship promoting agriculture in our area to the actual trade school, which at this point is um, is for welding. And he has uh, all those in favor, and that passes unanimously. Okay. And that is Texas State Technical College for those who want the details. And we'll announce that later, and next month we can give him that in our next meeting all right so number 10 discuss and take action on items for the town hall site so as we continue on um did try to rework um and update the um, proposed budget now, to date, we've spent less than 3000 of the proposed 15000 that's been dedicated for the town hall. Um, it, has been, it has been there about eight months. We did get the septic done, so the weather cooperated, thankfully. And that did pass inspection. Um, there's a little more dirt work, and I think uh, Roger Hall was um, going to volunteer for some of that. Um, there, so we have on this proposed budget... Um, we do need um, the ADA compliant van accessible parking uh, with sidewalk. And Leland Barnett had said he would give a $2,000 donation from that. So the quote came out at 4150. So that's well within our um, budgeted amount. And he could actually do that now that the septic's in, he could do that actually um, without any problem if the council approves that. Um, so um, is there some, and then we have um, the other item that that needs to probably happen is the um, add-on because it's exposed. We have exposed door. We have an exposed roofing area, 
and that finish out of that area is um, and finish in finishing the fellow said he would finish the gap that is uh, John Steele who is a framer um, for 3797 and that includes a labor quote of 1600 and the materials cost of 2197 and that's he said he would go ahead and just fix the gap that is there uh, with the two by four and I think we heard last time with the strap and the metal strapping that he felt was would be really good so for the 3797 and the 4150 um, it's well within our 15,000 um, well the, we have I guess 12,000 a little over $12,000 left it's well within that um, the, I guess the caveat that we have is we've been recommended to have a roof replacement but the inspector said it could be one to three years that you know it doesn't have to happen right away um, now people can guess that all day long but the inspector that council member Anderson said you know hey it could last one to three years so um, we don't really have a, re a roof repair in the budget so but our new budget our new fiscal year is only four months from now so I, I kind of feel like we'd be okay until our new fiscal year and then we could readdress you know address that at that point maybe and that was kind of the point of my questions earlier. I brought this up last uh, last month, and um, if we have insurance on this structure and we have a bad roof on this structure, mm -hmm. why can we not have the roof replaced with insurance? Well, if there's a strong wind or hailstorm, we've you had know. strong winds and hailstorms since mm -hmm. it's been in our possession. Yeah. It will be depreciated as well. I'm not saying yeah. we shouldn't look at it, but there's a depreciation schedule, and I'm pretty sure those shingles have seen their full depreciation by the <laughs> <laughs> so. true. And I'm not opposed to waiting. I'm, I'm the one that's wanting this roof. I'm not opposed to waiting, but there's no assurance that that that's going to be put first on the on the on the budget. <clears throat> I guess my fiscal responsibility just says, OK, if we if we accept all this, uh, we, we still have thirteen hundred dollars remaining. But in all reality, we're a debt free city that's working on on our our income right so what what was our uh to date what what money did we have available forty nine thousand forty nine thousand so what are our outstanding debts that that it's not and i've asked jenna for that before and i think we really need to do our outstanding debts okay so last time we had maybe a thousand dollar well actually we had some checks come in already okay. um so it's less than a thousand dollars for the fec reimbursement um we voted tonight to put in the the insurance and the insurance was yeah so tonight 2, tonight we spent thirty one hundred thirty eight dollars okay so uh we don't have um much debt i mean we don't have any debt but we do have some bills we approved to pay so but again we've only spent less than three thousand of the slotted fifteen thousand dollars that has already been pre-approved last fall for the town hall site so and we've got some great bids. I mean, when Leland is willing to do that for that mm -hmm. price, I mean, I think that's Given wonderful. Um, and his heart is for it, that, you know, to help. And so I think that's great. So is your ask to take this whole section right here and pass it? Or sure. Is your, or is your ask, <laughs> or is your ask for forty-one fifty and thirty-seven ninety-seven? So. Um, you know i put tentative goal dates on here so if if the will i mean can we just uh, pardon me i mean i built my house in nine months right so this has been over here eight months and it's almost 90 percent complete and we haven't really got very far so i just feel like good grief can we just get this done um so but i understand ask. we want to be fit. so my ask is yes can we get this done so what about the checks that are going out to the counties for road repairs from last month those have already been cashed. They've been cashed. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry, okay. does this or Tara? Maybe and plus, that, okay. On the closet thing, does that include the roof? Because the last time we yes. discussed this, he wasn't roofing; he was preparing it for a roofer. Mm -hmm. So a roofer was going to charge extra to do that little piece. And that little extra was um, sixty-seven or six hundred seventy something okay. dollars. So it's not a lot, um, but he would have to do that at the roof at the same or right at the right. same time. So there is. Um, that and of course there's different ways to look at that the six hundred and seventy dollars or so for the roofing and then um, then you have the actual shingles so I did I was trying to call on the break I was trying to call the roofer who gave us this great bid and that's the laminate so we have the one that 
Mr. Vasquez, I think, or is that right? No, Velas. It's, it's the same shingles. He just didn't. Oh, have I the, thought he has, he put on their composite yeah, shingles. Well, uh, your laminated shingles are composite shingles. Oh, I thought. Okay. All right. So his quote was for four thousand. But for he didn't all have that it. little section added on there. He did. When I called him, he said he don't even want to do it. Okay. So the the quote that we got from Mr. Simmons of Beauty Roofs was forty seven thirty six for all of the roof, and that would include you know this over the new closet little addition and the older roof. But I was trying to call him, and I tried to call him earlier to see if hey can we have you do this section now in the closet and then four months from now do the rest of it. So I, I, he's been pretty great so far, but his initial quote was, like I said, 675 for, it included the closet addition and the bathroom area because he would, in order to make it seamless and to make it um, watertight, according to his standards, which he has to do, um, he wanted to do the whole, that whole new section, not just the closet add-on, but the bathroom hallway area, because he has to make sure that it's watertight. And to do that, he had to put the flashing under all of it, and, and so all that area would have to be done at that time. So, and... Well, if we're, if we're true to our budget, we don't have the budget to do an entire room. So we would be throwing away six or seven hundred dollars that would cover the corner being built out for now, but that would get replaced in four or five months if we decide to go back. And so we'd be overlapping six or seven hundred dollars. I mean, that's is that right? That's that we replace that. Well, I don't know that Rupert's going to want to come have to patch that one little corner in. That'll drive them nuts. They're probably going to want to just strip it off and redo it. And it'll cost more labor because of the setup time. I mean, it's not going to cost. It's not going to save six hundred dollars yeah. to do that six hundred dollars now. And I mean, I, I like the budgets because they're good tools for us. But we need to treat them as tools, in my opinion. Keep it in mind, you know, that we've been doing well. That we have all the money that we do in the bank and keep it in mind that inflation is a real thing. I always make my decisions with money partially based off of that. So whatever money we have is depreciating. And as our previous lawyers have warned us, it's a liability to us too, because whatever we have in a bank, we can be sued for that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true, unfortunately. So bearing in mind those facts and the fact that we're not dried in, you know, maybe we should consider this roof. So just to point out, our, our April end statement says $49,000, but it does not have the $1,000 or the thirty-two eighty dollars to the counties in this sheet. So that brings us down with the money we spent tonight, plus any other outstanding debt that's not reported. It's $41,634, just so you're making informed decisions. It's not forty nine; dollars it's forty one. So the So it is May 11th, but so the, the checks... Yeah, you I, won't I, see those until next month yet for clarification now. Yeah. But, you know, we, um, we sure have a lot better attorney bills right now. So we're not That's paying good. five and eight thousand dollars a month in attorney bills. So I'm grateful for that. So, but yeah, we, um, that tarp is not going to last forever. And I feel like we need to just go ahead and get this done. It has been months and months. It is allotted in the budget. But I do, I think the, the rub there is okay, do we, um, go ahead and pay the, I guess the 670 plus materials for the roofing that he was, cause he, he will have to come out again, four or five months, six months later down the road. So it, you know, is a, as a contracted roofer, I mean, I think it's, it would cost us maybe a little bit more. So if you, I don't think so. I think John can put ice you think water John? shield on it, and it'll be fine until the roof gets replaced. That's what John's comment was earlier. If we, which I have some ice and water shield. You mean on the on the black on the add-on part? We're also about. So you're to saying not to roof season. it? Huh? <laughs> We're also about to enter our dry season. That's true. Yeah. So you're saying not to roof the black? Um, well, I mean, I would let the professionals say that, but I think that's what John was saying. If we had ice and water shield, it would get us through till whenever we decided to do a roof. Granted, that's not going to be two or three years, but it could last six months. So he could go ahead, you're saying that the Deck closet it. could be, you could put the black um, 
what do you call that stuff, the black? Well, it's not, you're not going to use tar paper. You, tar paper. you usually use the synthetic, but you'd go straight down with the ice and water shield. It's a, So on the wood on um, the decking, on the wood decking, then you just put the ice and water shield, and then we could leave that for how long? I mean, you'd have to ask John, but it, it, it has a shelf life that's, Hmm. I mean, okay. several months. And then, sure. if, so then in five, in four or five, six months, we could then have the whole roof done. Is that what you're suggesting? Mm -hmm. In the huh. next budget cycle. Okay. I like it. Any thoughts on that from others? So what is our total tonight? Because this has $2,500 in it that's already been done. Check, right? But that's mm -hmm. coming out of that same budget line. So the ninety eight nineteen and the thirty seven ninety seven is what you're so if now the ramp wouldn't be in that necessarily um well I mean if well, we're talking about moving okay. in it will be. Okay. Um three ninety nine point nine two let's see. And we, we have been collecting donations for the finish out on the tile for the bathroom. Um so we, we have received a hundred dollars for that and um so Terry, isn't it the ninety-eight nineteen minus twenty-five hundred, and that's your? We've already got the four nine. So in the oh, well, nine seven. Nine seven. That's already oh, oh. So that's a total of ten thousand sixty-one, or ten thousand six hundred seventeen dollars and seventy-one cents. Someone can check me. So that's the closet plus everything above that hadn't been paid for. Now the roof. Um, if we did the what is that called ice and water the shield. ice and water shield ice and water ice and water shield let me get my no that's but, all right. but I guess we got the, a, a contractor here what's already been paid is a 2500 plus out of six the 499 dollars that's done so if we did the ten thousand six hundred seventeen dollars worth and do the ice and water shield how much does that cost yeah, basically it's a very uh, I got enough. I Three thousand okay. dollars comes off the thirteen thousand, whatever. What was it? I got the same number. Yeah, 10, did you get the same number? Okay, thank you. So, so if we did the ice and water shield on the decking, like he is suggesting, um, I think that's a brilliant idea, actually. And then we could maybe consider the the roofing later when we have the the funds to do so in the next fiscal year. Um, then we could go ahead and do everything we need to possibly move in um, for you know, under eleven thousand dollars. So here's my only deal. That gives okay. us thirty-one thousand seventeen dollars and three cents. When's our next proposed uh, deposits from uh, from our vendors? Well, we should be getting. We're actually um, getting a deposit. Um, um, we should get July, and then we're also getting sales and use tax revenue, which will help with offset some of the road costs. Let's go more with the ones we know. <laughs> the yeah, I did get a, you know. A so franchise, we get those. Every quarter. April and, well, we get it about April, right? In April. And the so we should get the other one June, July. We'll get the, we'll get the next installment of, uh, in July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then June will be in June, end of June, January, March. In the end of June, we'll be getting some of the, the franchise fees. So we'll be getting another twenty grand or so. Hopefully. Yeah. I don't know. Eighteen if it's to twenty still, grand. I don't know if it's still on the table, but I would, before we spend any more money in the bathroom, that's kind of my hold up. I really want to know. We've had two people tell us it won't pass ADA inspection and. It's minuscule, but I don't want to spend a thousand dollars in that bathroom and it not pass inspection. It has to be ripped out. Well, I know in talking with so if we just went ahead and did the the um... and the other question I had, and this is nothing against you, Tom. I don't think those front steps are going to pass inspection either. I don't I, nothing against you. I appreciate the steps, but I don't think the front steps are going to pass inspection. There's no approach to step out to. So, I mean, is that another expense that we're going to hit, get hit with or we I mean, they were stated as temporary before. So I, I, uh, just to be fully transparent, I mean, what is our expectations? Are we going to have to spend another thousand dollars or is this guy that did us such a great job on the ramp and rails? Is that something that he could look at and tell us? 
Because this is a big ask. I mean, it's ten thousand dollars. I get it. We got but, but we got it budgeted. Rail, but the ramp and rail goes to that door. Doesn't I, it? I understand, but but you have to have two or you you have so, another oh, exit okay. and it has so to be the but that one it doesn't has have to be, be ada but it, it doesn't does but it has to, to be compliant you can't step out and go down eight inches immediately there has to be an approach on that step it's better than burning alive well i mean jump out a window so I mean. do you know if do you know if the inspector said anything about any of that tom no. he doesn't recall you have to have some kind of land so Tar, it's been over a year, so <laughs> yeah. I can't so, remember what I had for dinner last night. <laughs> <laughs> so can we, can we, so we don't belabor too much, but we do have, let's, let's hear from some citizens. Glenn Strauss. Glenn Strauss, 11072 County Road 2454. Uh, I understand, I heard today that the uh, campground church got torn down, uh, demolished. Because it was that's kind of off topic. Sorry. Well, it's an okay. example of okay. deferred maintenance not okay. done. All right, an okay. extreme example of deferred maintenance undone. My opinion is fix it, fix it now, and fix it right so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. All right, Kevin Sinkovich. Kevin Sinkovich, 11090, CR 2400, in regards to this um, agenda item. Um, so, Atara came to me two years ago and said, hey, we want to put the temporary town hall into uh, our place of business. Um, I was happy to do so. And in doing that, we've, made, we've paid the utilities, kept the place clean, tried to take care of things, no charge to the town. Didn't want to charge anything to the town. It was a donation to the town. I'm honored to be able to help with the town, but it has been two years. It's a moderate disruption to our current business. It is also um, a um, potential, I think it's hurting Teresa a little bit. She's in a very small room. It's cram packed with, uh, with um, a lot of stuff in there for the town, file cabinets, desks, that sort we, of thing. We don't, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, she, she needs some room, um, mm -hmm. some additional room. Um, also, just, uh, you know, it, there are some people in the town that don't feel comfortable coming to our place of business. And the town hall is meant to be a place of comfort for everybody in the town. No matter who you are, whether you're this mm -hmm. or that or whatever, everyone should feel comfortable and feel okay to go to their, it's their town hall. And uh, I'm asking that uh, you guys will take that in consideration. Um, I'm, I'm pushing Tara now to, uh, you know, two years is enough. I, I would like to see the town hall moved off our place of business and into its own um, location. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's good points. Um, so, to that point, Secretary Cherie says, having to use boxes for file cabinets, we have three file cabinets that have been donated, we just don't have a space to put them. And so it's, it's you know, it has been two years, we have two years worth of records, and she's doing great as far as organization, but it's cramped. And we need, we need space. So, um, Dale Bryant. Could you get to the microphone? Go, go ahead and come up and state your name and address, Bill please. Bryant, 11, 139 County Road 2464. Terry, you're, you're correct. If we were to pull the stairs off, build a five by five, mm -hmm. right here, with the rails, and then reattach the staircase, that might suffice. Okay. Okay, so there's Tom's next project. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. Anybody have donated lumber, though? That'd be great. Thank you, Dale. Uh, Shelly Smith? Patrick Smith? Joshua? Oh, he's gone. Okay. All right. So, Tom put those posts in concrete for the bulletin board. He's, he's uh, on it. So, so are, are we looking to do to prove everything say the 98 19 plus whatever we were talking about a few minutes ago well, less less of 2500 
Unless the 499. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. Plus the one below that, I believe. Um, the 3797. The 3797. Yes, sir. Right. So, yeah, then I'd, I'd make the motion that we approve that. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. We have a motion by Anderson, seconded by White, to approve um, the phase one and phase two um, as written on this proposed budget sheet, less the ones that have already been completed. All those in favor? Woohoo! That passed. Five, five and a half. Thank you, guys. All right. Okay, moving on. Um, number 11, um, discuss and take action on requests for qualifications, uh, the RFQ, as presented for a general use town engineer. So, I was kind of hoping Secretary Janet could pull one out of her hat because with all her years of experience, um, um, she went, she, uh, she actually went to Lake for Mother's Day, <laughs> which I don't blame her. But then the, the town attorney came up with one. Um, and then Tom also, I think, has um, found a couple, is that right? A couple well, of actually, them? Examples? I found quite a few, uh -huh. but most of them, some of them were 30, 40 pages long, Oof. which I didn't like. Yeah. A lot of them were, say, eight, seven, eight pages long, which I kind of like. One was two pages long, which I really liked. That was one from Quinlan, but it wasn't for the just the town engineer. It was for a specific project. I call the mayor. It's based on their RFQ for the town engineer, but it's specific to this project. So I liked it because it was short and to the point and still had all of the qualifications, um, but it does have to have some things added in to make it more general for a town engineer. Now, having said that, the one that is for this town I've never heard of, Summontron, Summontron, it had kind of uh, everything I think we would need as well. And so there's a lot of options and, and a lot of them, but they all have basically the same thing in that they describe what the uh, duties are of rating, excuse me, what the, uh, 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 any kind of engineering company would need to proposed as well as a, a, a rating system. Now, I talked to the mayor of uh, Quinlan, uh, Jackie Goldman, who Tara and I had met at the Quinlan uh, QISD bond meeting a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they had a luncheon. And so we talked, and then after Tara left, I talked more with him. And anyway, he said, if you have questions, he can help. He'd be happy to help us. He understand our situation. But so when I talked to him, he, he basically said, you know, you have to have this and then you have to go out for bids and there's a way. And he said, you need to narrow it down to about four to five companies and then put it up to the council to vote on those. And so I said, well, did you have any single individuals come up as an engineer or were they all council uh, uh, companies? He said, no, they were all companies that had a broad range of services. Now, I looked in the internet, and, and there are quite a few companies that um, provide the whole range of services, and I don't know, they're probably more expensive than an individual, but they're more all-encompassing than what we'd ever want. Now, Jackie Goldman didn't ask me what do we needed, what we need right now, and I said, well, as far as I could see, our most urgent need had to do with right-of-ways and uh, engineering reviews of that. Now, who knows down the road what we're gonna be faced with for an engineer. The companies tend to cover a lot of different things. Individual engineer may or may not. So the, the point that I have here is these, we have to turn out our RFQ, I believe, and, and there is a way to do it. And then it has to have certain features, which are in this one, Simonton, theirs and, and others. They're all very similar. And when I asked Jackie Goldman about how they did it, he says, oh, we just copied from another company, another city. <laughs> he said, we didn't write this. And, and that's kind of what Mr. That's Berman enough. has said we needed to do. Just look at other cities, find what they have, find one you like, and then copy it. So the one that I thought was probably reasonable was the Simonton, the one I like best, but it has some editing that would have to be done. It's the one for Quinlan. The advantage of the one for Quinlan is Jackie... Uh, uh, they do have one, by the way, the general one uh, for all of the city engineer. And Jackie uh, Goldman said if we had a problem, we could come down and he'd sit with us and go through it or help us. 
So that's the one advantage of that is being able to go talk to Jackie Goldman and find out things that they went through that he, where he may be able to help us, even though, and there's no pride of ownership in his, in the one that they use. He said they copied it from another company anyway. I mean, another town anyway. So on this one from Quinlan, I, I kind of do like the fact that it does provide factors and objective way to score it. I think that's kind of an intriguing. I haven't seen that on the other RFQs, and that could be beneficial because then you're yeah, they all have. They not have like that. Review of selection. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah, they one of them. They have one on page six. Mm -hmm. on page six. Quite as in and, and I had the impression just looking at them that you have to have that. In other words, to be fair to the mm -hmm. bidders. Right. Tell them how you're going to grade But it actually time. gives a place for the score, which yeah, is what I mean. Like, somebody can't come, come back right. and say. You actually write it on, on the sheet itself, so then you have a, Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Jackie said they brought them in, interviewed uh, the four or five, and then took a vote. Mm -hmm. Well, and we can, I, I'm with Tom, the Simonton's pretty clean, and we could always, if we like the little scoring section, we could always cut that in. Mm -hmm. And then did anyone get the one that Mr. Berman sent? Oh, no. I, I know it came late, and then I wasn't sure with I didn't get these. Jana. I didn't either. Um, you didn't? <laughs> no, I did I, I apologize. I'm not sure with her um, schedule now. I'm Maybe not sure. Maybe you did, Jonathan? <laughs> okay. But no, okay. I, I didn't get these. I didn't get anything from Mr. Berman, and I checked my mail, my okay. email just before I came. Well, so I feel like we could come, you know, maybe combine the best of all three, or look I, at I think that. I think can that's probably what we would them do. On, yeah. Can we put them on the forum, maybe, yeah. and then Work hash it, the you know, hash it out over there and negotiate what we things we like, and so because I don't think we're going to solve this tonight. It's pretty. The interesting thing about mm -hmm. Simonton is it's established in 1850. They're a new town compared to poetry. <laughs> established in 1845. 18, oh, established 1850. Yeah. Um, so then that will give you a chance, since you didn't get the one from Mr. Berman, apparently. Um, um, so so I, I guess the main point is there's options. And right. we have, yeah. right. have examples we can go through. We don't need to have Mr. Berman spend a lot of time writing it up. I mean, he's got one. He probably mm -hmm. copied it from somebody else. <laughs> so okay. we can he go He was pretty through, quick with it. Put it together yeah. and then bring it back to the council to okay. prove and then go out for uh, no. our piece. Yeah. Public comment. We have one. Uh, Glenn Strauss, you want to pass? Okay. All right. Um, so do you all want to just kind of have time to digest all these and get the one from Berman and then we'll bring it back and to the forum maybe and yeah. kind of negotiate, you know, see what we like and don't like and discuss it on there. Okay. So we'll, okay, if we table this until next time. Um, on number 12, um, discuss posting the agenda for the June 20th meeting early on June the 10th. Um, this is for um, my husband and I to be able to go on a much needed vacation for a few days. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and... Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go, you can't go. Uh, it's been two years. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to make that um, known um, so that if we did that, I'll try and post everything early on June 10th, but then that would push everything back and I just didn't want it to be a surprise to anybody that we would need everything by June the 2nd. And, and Tara, I did mention, I want to be gone the last two weeks of August, which is, <laughs> I would prefer be shoved up to the, uh, starting the 15th mm -hmm. of August, okay. which is a Tuesday. So mm -hmm. I would prefer to have our meeting in August the okay, week before. One month at a time here, Tom. You're going to no, confuse sorry. us. <laughs> but no, that's a, yeah, no, I noted. But, but, but I yeah. mean, Terry, more than anybody, as mm -hmm. much as anybody needs a schedule. Are we moving right. the meeting date or the agenda no, date? No, we're just moving. I'm just, what I'm just saying here is, the agenda date. and I almost put it on a report, but I wanted you all to be able to really talk yeah, about it. Um, and there is no citizen comment. So, excuse me. So basically, I was trying to keep the meeting date the same, okay. 
but I just wanted to let it be known we're gonna we're gonna need the, all the information earlier than usual. Does that make sense? Yep, okay. Are you all That's okay good. with that? Yep. Okay. Um, but and then we'll deal with Tom's issue um, at a later date, and we'll need to discuss when if we want to move our regular meeting and all that later. So next month we'll probably be dealing with that. Okay. okay. Um, any general comments? We have Glenn Strauss. Kevin Sinkovich, uh, Dale Bryant, I think he may have left. Um, Jonathan Blake, pass, okay. Uh, Shelly and Patrick, I think they left. Mike Griffin, pass. Josh left. Jack Sinkovich, okay. Wow, is this a record? Nope. Where's, where's the time? Uh, the time is now 8.54.